Uh, but been with Cincinnati now five years. Uh, been with a few other carriers prior to that, uh, almost exclusively with multi-line agents. Episode 96, Yellow Color Glasses. We are here um, with Darren Hawley. Um, so Darren is our Cincinnati rep um, on the life insurance side. So we, we actually talked about this. We just met each other just what about a month ago or so. So pretty pretty recent. Um, and we were first time we met him, we were like, hey, let's get you on the podcast. He was like, yeah, I would love it. So, uh, and the other guy he was with, known him for a couple months or more than that. And he was like, well, thanks for asking me. I've known you for like <laughs> five times the amount you've known this guy for. So. Anyways, um, no, we've been really excited about having you guys come on. Cincinnati, like I said, is one of our favorite carriers. They have great products um, from anything and everything that they offer. So, um, but before we get started and actually get Darren talking here, um, we're going to read a review. Okay. So as you guys know, everything that we do here, good word travels faster than bad or bad word travels faster than good. So anytime we can get some good word out there, it's, it's, it's great for us. So uh jason p says great insurance group rosa is always on on top of everything that you need her to do so thank you jason um like i said reviews go a long ways i think we're up to like 135 star so we're, nice we're, we're we were slacking because i think i got we got a lot of those at the very first couple years and then the past six months we've not been doing great so anyways um darren thank you Thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. So I appreciate it. I was excited whenever you were open to doing this. Mm -hmm. and Definitely. Um, so it's fun. So before I guess we get into your background and a little bit about you, um, let's do our peak and our pit. Okay. Um, so I know we talked about this a little bit. So peak. So a peak for me is we, every year, we go up to Omaha with the, um, Cyrus, Cyrus Jaffrey. He puts on a big golf tournament for a foundation. Uh -huh. He's another insurance agency. And there's a bunch of other insurance groups that go up there and it's a big it's a big basically a big weekend a bunch of insurance guys golfing so nice. every week every year we do that this weekend is that weekend so we're taking the team up we're leaving on friday and we'll be back on sunday so that's a peak that i that that's going on for me right now fun what about you a uh, peak for me last week i moved my son down for his first internship down in wichita kansas nice. And so he's going to be a junior at KU, but uh, has an internship in cybersecurity. So that's okay. why, actually, I was going to do this last week, and we ended up moving him down there last week. Ah. And so he just had his first day this week, excited, and uh, it's amazing how fast that time goes that my it's son's wild. getting out there in the business world already. So it's wild. Yeah, I, it's, it's amazing. I, I've seen, I have cousins that, like, they're turning 22, 23 now. And it's like, holy cow, like we just celebrated one of their yeah. birthdays. I'm like, what? Like, I don't even remember that. Like this is like, so weird. So, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay. A pit. So a pit for me is it's kind of goes in with my peak is we've just been busy every weekend. Um, we went on our anniversary trip and then we've been having either a wedding or birthday parties, like something going on every single weekend. So I think after this weekend, we're gonna be in a chill spot. So, um, but it's all good problems. I'd much rather be busy than be bored, I guess. Definitely, definitely. So what's your pit? Uh, my pit's a little work related. Okay. In, in today's market with insurance, obviously in the PNC world, uh, a lot of rate increases, a, a lot of questions, a, a lot of, uh, uh, reviewing and changing and things like that on the life insurance side what happens then yeah. is that it kind of gets forgotten or, or dropped and um, even though the rates haven't gone up in life insurance have actually come down mm -hmm. um, the struggle is hey how do we bring that to our agents and our consumers mm -hmm. and so you know it's a it's a good problem because it opens the door um, but again sometimes people see that as one of the lines of insurance they should drop and we'll talk about a little bit why that's yeah. the case. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I was actually going to ask, like, how that affects, like, again, when everything on in the insurance market is, like, everybody talks about how this is the worst it's ever been, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how does that affect the, the back end side with financial services and life insurance um, with these insurance carriers? So, yeah, I'm interested to talk about that. So let's just go right into it then. So um, I guess tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, what you do um, and how you got to uh, work in here at 
with Cincinnati. Yeah. Well, I've been in insurance uh, right at 20 years now. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I was actually a high school teacher in, in the middle of Kansas. Um, and, and I found there's a lot of crossover from teaching into insurance. And so a lot of insurance is just education, not, not only the products and how they work, uh, but what the options are and communicating that to, to the client. So that's why I think education and insurance have a lot of crossover. Okay. Uh, but I've been with Cincinnati now five years, uh, been with a few other carriers prior to that, mm-hmm. uh, almost exclusively with multi-line agents uh, okay. like the agency here. And so what I find is my role is how can we take a property casualty agency where they have a ton of clients uh, and they see a lot of people, but how do we have that life insurance conversation as quickly and as efficiently as possible? Uh, Because everybody has to have auto insurance. Most people have home or renters or something. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have life insurance. Correct. And so that's kind of my role of, hey, how do we open that door, have mm-hmm. that conversation, and make that process as simple and as quick as we possibly can. Yeah. And is that something that you actually help agents with? Like, do you go in and, because I know we've sold some life insurance on our side, which I know mm-hmm. we haven't really worked with each other that long, but, um, you know, we've, we've done it before. But I feel like there's sometimes you have these PNC agents and they've never sold any life insurance. Right. Is that... Like, do you help agencies, you know, with the actual selling and the technique of it? Or? It depends on the scenario. Okay. Um, I come in mainly with more advanced type sales. Okay. So if we're talking business owners, talking about key person mm-hmm. or uh, funding a buy-sell mm-hmm. agreement, where there's uh, a little more financial underwriting, financial mm-hmm. justification, a little more in the weeds type policy. For the, the typical, you know, husband, wife, they're, they're uh, covering their income, covering their mortgage, that kind of thing. What I really do is, hey, how can we have the conversation with them? And I can help an agent with that. Mm-hmm. But what we really do is take it from there. And so all the agent really has to do is, hey, let's bring up the conversation. Uh, let's open the door. Um, then we have the process in Cincinnati where we actually take the application for them. Mm-hmm. And so we do the application over the phone. Uh, we do any of the other backroom type things for the agent so that the agent can do what they do best, and that's talk to people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. And how, 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 like, what's that underwriting process with Cincinnati? And, and I guess compare that to some of the other carriers that you've worked with before. Um, Cause I mean, 20, how long did you say you've been at Cincinnati, with Cincinnati? Five years Five. with Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. So yes, I mean, you've had, and I think being well versed with other carriers too is, is really good. And there is a difference. Yeah, definitely, and definitely. there is. And I, I feel like, um, Again, that's like, yeah, I guess talk on that. Like what, what, the, what Cincinnati's underwriting process looks like sure. compared to the others. So all life insurance has some basic underwriting rules that they have to follow. Mm-hmm. And so when life insurance is underwritten, um, it's looked at, hey, what's the probability of that person passing away and how soon? And so a lot of things come into play, not only health questions, uh, mainly most carriers will do a, a paramed exam where they have to give blood and your analysis and you get a full blood workup that, that mm-hmm. the client gets for free. Now, on, on specific to us, what we do is we take the application. If that application is fairly clean, meaning not a lot of health history, not a lot of prescriptions, mm-hmm. um, then many times we'll go straight to issue. So the client wouldn't even have to do that paramed exam. We don't contact their doctor. Um, we go straight to issue based on what we see on the application. Gotcha. Now, if there are some health underlying health issues, which many times there are, you know, high blood pressure, cholesterols, diabetes, uh, you name it, um, then what we'll do is a paramed exam will be scheduled. And so an independent company comes out. They can either come to the home or to the place of business. You can go to a facility here in the Kansas City Metro. There's dozens of those that they, yeah. the client can walk Like Lab into. Corp, yep. I'm assuming? Okay. Exactly. Any okay. of those, you can walk right in okay. and have it done. Um, once we get the results back from that, then the underwriter looks at it and makes a determination of, hey, what classification does this person fall into for risk? Okay. Um, at that point, we tell the agent, hey, great news, this person is a preferred risk, is a standard risk, um, depends on what, what comes about. Mm-hmm. And then the agent informs the client of that, and the client either accepts the policy as approved, or there can be changes made at that point as well. So if the price does happen to go up or comes down, Mm -hmm. then they can alter and make sure it fits in their budget. Because the last thing we want to do is have a client spend too much money and not keep that policy in force. That's right, because everybody wants as much life insurance 
you know, coverage as possible, right? But Definitely. if something does get, you know, everybody wants a million or two million or five million dollars in life insurance. Why not? Yeah, let's get it all. <laughs> but when times like you've, I think you've mentioned it a little bit at the beginning, like sometimes those things get cut out if, if money ever gets tight. Mm-hmm. And last thing you want to do is put someone, I guess, on their higher end of their budget, right, on what they want right. to budget for this. Where they're like, oh man, then two or three years, and they cancel it, and then they just wasted that extra Exactly. Time. And that does nobody any good. No. It doesn't do the company any good, doesn't yep. do the insured any good. Yep. And so it's got to fit in their budget. And so that communication between the agent and the client has to be there. You know, life insurance kind of has a little bit of a bad name mm-hmm. out in the industry in that, um, you know, m- many agents try to oversell or, or try to sell too much, mm-hmm. and uh, all they do is shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I agree. sad, it's true. No, I agree, and that's that's one of the biggest things that I, even in, when I was at State Farm, like that was what we talked mm-hmm. about, is, you know, always something is better than nothing. 100%. Right? I'd much rather get something small in place, because, I mean, yes, insurance, I mean, again, I think it's more relationships. I think people mm-hmm. say it's insurance is sales, and yes, it is, but it's a relationship. If you have a relationship, yeah. that person's trusting you, and then that's the sell, right? Exactly. exactly. It's not. It's not. Oh, I'm trying to sell this product like I'm going and selling a truck out on a car lot. Right. right? It's just not right. the same. Anyways, I always told people like, hey, get something. Like something is better than nothing. And the last thing we want to do is eat up all of your budget. And mm-hmm. then in a year, two years, three years, something small happened, and you're like, man, I can't. Like, if I can just go, I'm gonna just get rid of that expense. Right. Because it's easy to do. Oh. Yeah. Tremendous. It's not a sexy thing. I mean, life insurance is not a fun product to be buying. And and that's why, hey, it's one of those things you put on autopilot and it just goes. And uh, the nice thing about life insurance, hey, you're not going to get a renewal where it goes up in the next 10 or 15, Mm -hmm. 20 years, depending on the type you buy. You know, so it's a little bit different than most coverages in that, hey, you set it, forget it. But the great thing is the earlier you buy it or the younger you are, hey, the cheaper it is. Yep. And so uh, many times people don't think about it until they have to have it because, and then they're too old, unhealthy. Um, and, and so it's that communication of, hey, you need to buy it while you're young and healthy because that's when it's the most inexpensive. Yeah. No, and that's, yeah, that's a great point. Um, we're never going to be healthier than what we are right now, right? Exactly. I mean, you just or don't younger. know what, to- or, or younger, <laughs> yes. We don't know what tomorrow looks like. So let's talk on um, Cincy's, Cincinnati's products. Um, mm-hmm. So what kind of, so, and one question that, uh, I didn't even get to ask you, and I was going to ask you before, is, you know, how are you got people that are whole life or term, right? And that's the biggest always life oh. insurance question that I feel like I always get when someone asks, like, what, what's your thought? You a whole, ins- whole, li- a li- a whole life insurance mm-hmm. guy or a term guy? And I think from my end, the answer to that is I'm a combination. I think mm-hmm. every situation is different. I think there's a situation for each product, and I, I love both of them. Right. Um, I really do for the certain right scenarios, right, mm-hmm. as long as it's Agreed. put in that spot. So. Uh, what's Cincy's products like? What, what all do they? What all do you guys offer? Well, we do offer both of those, uh, uh-huh. term and whole life. And, and on that end, you know, is one better than the other? And, and you're exactly right. It depends on the individual. Yes. Um, a lot of mainstream media talks about buy term and invest the difference. Mm-hmm. And whole life is. You know, I've heard the payday scam artists of the the 2000s and everything yep. else. And but for the right scenario, it's the it could be the best product out there. And so people have to realize media talks to the masses and we don't live in a perfect world. In a perfect world, hey, all we would have is term and everybody would invest it and they would make 11, 15, 20% every single year. And you'd be golden by the end of 20, 30 years. Uh, But we all know the world is not perfect. Mm -hmm. And many people buy term and then spend the difference. And then they get stuck at age 60 when they have nothing left. Yep. And so, agreed, it is a combination of both. Now, what we sell the most of is our term product. Um, We're very competitive with term all the way from a 10-year all the way up to a 30-year term. Okay. And so that depends on kind of the person's situation. Um, So the younger person, obviously, we want to get that coverage out to a a time period when maybe their debts are less, the children are out of the house, maybe the business has their debts paid off. So that could be 20 or 30 years. Um, In terms of whole life, again, there's some options there with whole life. Our whole life is a little bit different uh, than most carriers in that our death benefit stays the same. So if you buy $200,000 worth of whole life today, uh, you're going to get $200,000 next year. You have $200,000 20 years from now and 50 years from now. Uh, There are no dividends inside the product. There's no interest gained. Um, It is all 100% guaranteed. 
And so what we want to avoid is a client getting their statement at the end of the year, and it looks different than what they were showed a year ago because of just changes in interest rates, dividends. Uh, we, we don't want that scenario. We want our clients to know exactly what they have. Okay. And so that's why our whole life is set up that way. The nice thing about that is that makes the premium about 20 to 30% less than most of our competitors because it doesn't have that built-in raise in mm -hmm. death benefits. Um, then we do have one product in the middle that's uh, fairly unique to us. Most of the carriers in life insurance have dropped out of a return of premium term. And so it's a product that kind of fits in the middle. So as you know, you know, at the end of a term, a term is you know, just for that, let's say a 20 year time period. Okay. At the end of the 20 years, you're just done. You've had your coverage, uh, just like renting the house, you walk away, uh, you walk away with no coverage, you walk away with, with nothing. And you're out that 20 years of premium. Mm -hmm. Where on the whole life, obviously, is the exact opposite, is buying, investing, and you have equity inside that product. Mm -hmm. At the return of premium term, what happens at the end of the 20 years is that we give you an option. Hey, do you want every penny back that you put into this policy? If so, we give you a check. Uh, it is tax-free because there's mm -hmm. no gain. And you walk away with every penny you paid into that policy. The other option you can have is maybe then you're 60, 65 years old and you don't need cash. You know, you're retired and, and comfortable, but you want a paid up policy. And so what you can walk away with is a paid up policy forever. And that's in the illustration exactly what, how much that how would much be. How much you purchase it. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and so it gives you options at the end of your term. Um, and that's the scary part about being in this business is people walk away with just term policies. They're older, mm -hmm. they're unhealthy, and they have no options. And so we want to make sure with that product they have options at the end of their term. Now, sometimes it is because it is higher priced. Mm -hmm. And so there's more premium. It costs more to do that. And, and so what many times people will do is, hey, let's say if you had a million dollar term policy. So instead of doing all of it in return of premium, you do half of it. You do 500,000 return of premium, get a lot of your money back. And then at the end of the 20 years, you can have that cash or you can have a paid up policy moving mm -hmm. forward. Okay. And, and so that's where the, the value of the agent really comes into play mm -hmm. to explain those options. And because it's a pretty simple process, but unless you do it every day, uh, you don't really think about that as Correct. a consumer. Correct. And so basically what that means and what you're saying is, you know, you have a term and a term is you're going to pay on it for 20, 30 years. After the end mm -hmm. of the term, it's done. You don't right. get any money back with a normal term. The return of premium policy would be the same thing as a term, except at the end of the term, you get everything you paid back. Exactly. And then you have options to roll it into buying up a whole life policy or a, mm -hmm. a paid up policy? Yes, yeah, so you can get uh, just a paid up policy paid up without policy any exchange, with okay. no exchange of money. Okay. You can take that cash, maybe at that time there's other life policies you want to buy. Okay. You can take that cash and do that. You can take that cash and go buy a boat. Okay. I mean, it's so you Like money. you said, you have options and that's, mm -hmm. I do think, I agree, like that's, I always talk about that with everything that we do with the broker, you know, brokerage here is like we have options. Like right. the modern era of insurance is options. and. You got to have options right now, and then you need to have options down the road because a lot right. of how are you supposed to plan for to know exactly what you want in 30 years? Right. Things change. Well, and the other thing to think about is term insurance across the board, not just Cincinnati, but every term carrier in the industry, over 98% of those policies never pay a death benefit. Wow. And so many people think they're covered, and they mm -hmm. are, but they get to the end, and then what? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a 90 or a 98% chance, which means that's a good thing, you're going to live. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you may not be healthy and you're way older. Yep. And so if you want to leave some money behind, if you have uh, a need to pay some bills when you mm -hmm. pass away, you know, this gives you those kind of options yeah. to look at. Okay. Um, how much more on average is, is the uh, return of premium than the, uh, the, the, the normal term? Yeah. Depends on the age and the classification. We talked about underwriting before, you know, that preferred standard kind of thing. It can be anywhere from two to three and a half times the premium. So it, it is a, a commitment. In but terms it's not, of money. It, you know, when you're comparing that to a whole life policy, whole life policy is probably going to be 5x. Right. Right. I mean, right. Get, I mean, that estimate, right? So, um, okay. No, and that's, and then that, the other thing that does, I guess, as the, whoever's listening as a consumer is like, since it's less, you're going to be able to still get that that death benefit coverage that you might need or that you might want mm -hmm. and not feel like, you know, yeah, exactly. you can't afford, maybe you can't afford a whole million dollar whole life policy. Um, 
but you don't want a whole million dollar term, so you want to have a mix there. Right. It, it just that perfect fit of, of kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing people don't realize, and statistics have told us this, is that um, you know people aren't real familiar with life insurance premiums in general uh, because they look at it as um, you know the, the most common example is health insurance, and, and, and we only know how high those premiums have been over the last five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And so when you tell somebody a million dollars, you know that is like lottery money to, yeah. to most people. And so it sounds really expensive, uh, but for a young 30, 40 year old, hey, you're only looking at 20, 30, 40 dollars yeah. a month. And, and so it's not um, the, the huge amount of money that maybe sometimes people think it is. Mm -hmm. And the only way to know that, I mean, you can go online and get quotes. You can and you ask uh, any of the agents to get mm -hmm. quotes. Um, but until they see the actual numbers, um, you know, right now what Limra says is, you know, 58% of people overestimate the cost of life insurance. And so that's many of the reasons why they don't explore it, because they're scared of the mm -hmm. premiums. Um, when in fact, hey, it, it can be very affordable. Yeah, and that's kind of goes into your point with when to get it, right? Right. Like, like I feel like that's a that's a question is like when do I get life insurance? So I guess talk on that today. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's, the, the, that's, that's the that's the that's the best answer is yeah. today or yesterday. Yesterday. Um, it, it depends on the individual. Uh, again, you cannot go get it and and not be able to afford the premiums, mm -hmm. and, and so you kind of want to have that in mind of a budget of where you want to be at. Uh, but the person that really wants to get it is. You know, the younger you get it, the better. Um, but usually, the typical client is you know uh, just a new homeowner, new kids. Um, but again, there's people counting on your income to survive. Yep. You know, and so once people are counting on your income, you know that's the time you need life insurance. And many people will re relate to, hey, I have it at work. You know, that's the mm -hmm. most common question is, you know, I have life insurance at work. Um, but, but again, here in modern times, how many people stay at the same job anymore? Correct. Very rarely. Uh, many places aren't offering workplace coverage anymore. Yeah, that's um, true too. And, and many times if you do stay in the same job, all of a sudden you retire, become disabled, you're 50, 55, and now you have no coverage, and now you're that much older and more mm -hmm. expensive. And, and so while workplace coverage is great, it's cheap, get it, uh, you really want to buy your own policy um, that you can control. Um, and it will be way cheaper because it's based on your health and your yep. age. So, so yeah, the, again, that younger demographic, mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40 years old, uh, many business owners will buy it, you know, when they're 50, 60, just to cover business type needs. Um, but again, it is there to protect that income, protect mm -hmm. that money. Uh, so in case you're not able to provide that, the insurance does. Yep. Because that, that hose shuts off if something happens. 100%. Right. You know, and it's all about, I mean, insurance in general is statistics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a numbers game. And, and so the scary number that I like to tell people is uh, you look at people born in the USA, um, and most people plan on working to age 65, mm -hmm. you know, close to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the odds of somebody not making it to 65? And, and all of a sudden, when you put it into that perspective, and you pull up those stats, it's one in six. Hmm. So, so one in six people will not earn the money that they're counting on for their kids, for their legacy, mm -hmm. for their business. And all of a sudden, that that's you know a scary odds. Yeah, it really is. I didn't know that. I think you I think you said that one time when you came in a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and I was like, wow, that's a that's a pretty good, that's a it pretty is. wild you know statistic. It, it is. It's. A, I actually had to pull it up and confirm it for myself because I heard that from somebody. It's like, wow, that's. Yeah. That's pretty scary. It and, is. And actually, for males, it's about one in five. I was going to say, I bet for males, it's, yeah. it's even more likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what's the average, what, what, what's, do you know the average um, age that a, a, a female and male are living to nowadays? Right now, that expectancy, um, COVID kind of put, put a wrench into a lot of those yeah. numbers. Uh, still around that 84, 82 okay. to 84 range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, obviously, females are still longer than males. Mm -hmm. um, you know, COVID really did throw a wrench into a lot of those st stats mm -hmm. <laughs> and averages yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but now they're back to normal. Back to normal, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's what I thought. I think they kind of hung around there. But I've heard, I've heard people talk um, that there's, they think that there's somebody on this planet that's going to live to be like 150 right now. 
like that. Like I was on some podcast. And, yeah, and this I, guy I've was heard like, that too. And this guy was like, I think he was talk, even talking about him. He's like, I'm going to live to 150 years old, and this is how I'm going to do it, and blah, 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 blah. I don't so, know if I'd want to live that long. Huh? <laughs> so I don't that's know if I'd long, want to live that long. That's what I'm that's thinking. I'm like, time. that's like <laughs> not even a quarter of the way through. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about the products. So we got um, – Talk, yeah, talk about all the products and what you guys have to offer. What's, I guess, what's a, like, what are things to look for when buying, of course, an insurance policy, life insurance policy, mm-hmm. right? We get, we know we, different scenarios are different um, for everybody, but from an insurance standpoint, like, what, what, what should a, what should a, should a consumer look for um, with an insurance company, sure. life insurance? Sure. Life? Um, when you look at carriers, carriers are all, um, dictated by the state insurance guarantee association okay. and so they are covered or backed up by the states and so even if a, a carrier were to become insolvent go bankrupt what have you those contracts are still honored and another carrier would come gobble them up even before the state would take place okay. and so you know just be comforted a little bit in that hey it could make a difference in some things, but that carrier is not going to go away. Or your contract, even though it was with XYZ company and they're no longer in business, you still have a contract and okay. somebody will pay that death benefit. Now, that being said, um, the the size of the company and the rating of the company is huge. Um, so if you want to look for a company that's at least an A-rated company, meaning that they're very financially stable, mm-hmm. secure, um, now, what that means for you is competitive premiums, but it also means support when it comes to questions, when it comes to call centers, when it comes to documentation, technology, all of those things come into play okay. with a very stable, um, sizable company. Um, the other thing to look for is, you know, who are you buying it from? And so there's starting to be some things out there where you can jump online yourself um, and, and try to buy it. And what's scary about that is you're kind of taking the risk into your own hands. Yep. Well, one, with scammers and everything else out there, they're just trying to get all your personal information. Mm-hmm. The other thing is you may be getting a policy that you don't really need or fit your scenario mm-hmm. situation. And so that's why you know it's so important to have an agent represent you. Um, it doesn't cost you anything whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that agent has what's called errors and omissions coverage. So in case something goes wrong, they have a backup to protect you. When you go online and buy your own product, there's no errors and omissions. And so if you messed up, you messed up. And and you're playing with fire then because, hey, you don't know what's going to happen. Correct. Um, Now, are there better carriers out there? Uh, Carriers kind of have you know, their niches. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, you know, we're pred- predominantly term and whole life. Uh, there's carriers out there where they'll do variable life. Uh, they'll do index life. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not something we dabble in just because it's not our primary focus with our clients and agents. Um, now, when those policies get sold or if you buy one of those policies, mm-hmm. you want to understand what you're getting. Um, there's a lot of moving parts in some of those policies. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked for a brokerage for five years, sold lots of those kind of products. Um, and very few times did the client and sometimes even the agent understand what they were getting. And, and so that's why it's kind of back in the eighties, universal life policies were kind of that way. Okay. And now they're coming into play where some of those people are in their sixties, seventies, eighties, and their policies are running out that they were kind of told yep. some things that didn't come true. Interest rates back then were showing 15, 20% a year. Then they went through many years where it's two and 3% a mm-hmm. year. And all of a sudden those policies are running out. Yep. And again, that's one of the reasons why we took the stance of, hey, we just don't want to mess with those. Mm-hmm. Um, we want something that's guaranteed that that will not go away. Uh, so you want to make sure you know what you're getting. Um, the other thing to think about is uh, many carriers and agents or agencies, you know, it's neither right nor wrong. You know, combine that element of investing with insurance, and those are predominantly through variable products or index products. Um, it's not a bad thing, mm-hmm. uh, but again, it, it's kind of the killing two birds with one stone theory. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I've been on both sides. You know, I've been on the agent side. I've been on the carrier side of both mm-hmm. those types. Well, what mm-hmm. I see though is um, what I compare it to. And I don't know who told me this once, but hey, if you want to do two things with one. All of us be using sporks for everything. It's true. You know, yeah. Be, because, hey, why not? Mm-hmm. Um, but what I see is, hey, insurance be insurance because it's coverage, it's taking away risk. 
Why are we trying to take away risk and add risk at the same time? Yeah. And so, hey, guarantee that's, your insurance that's a coverage. Great point. And then, hey, if I know I have a permanent policy, I'm going to pass on to my kids three hundred thousand dollars. I can be comfortable now with my investments in 401k and be way riskier because, hey, if I lose some of that, I'm okay because I have the coverage yep. on the other hand. Correct. And so it frees up the the money. It frees up uh, the risk to take with and, and actually gain some with that. So so, so it, yeah. it's just a, a personal preference. Um, it is. And it's wild how you've said a lot of things that are, I'm like. Like, yeah, that's exactly how I think. Like, with the whole budget thing, um, you know, and then, like, even with this, like, you just, like, yeah, I mean, you want to, insurance is to eliminate risk, right? And right. if you're in, in putting the investing part on it, that is a risk. So it's, like, exactly. it's counterproductive almost. Exactly. Now, again, it's situational, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's Definitely. there's a lot of different ways you can use it. And I guess one thing that I would recommend on that as well is, you know, there are people that have a niche with what type of products mm-hmm. they usually write and they're comfortable with and they, they, they believe in, right? 100%. And definitely. go to those experts, right? It, right. Like if someone's all you know used to selling term and whole life and you want, a, you want an indexed or a variable policy, you know, make sure you're talking to the right you know, yes. agent because another thought on my end that I have is that we try to have a full-on conversation with mm-hmm. clients when we have these, when we talk about life insurance. Because if we're just adding this onto a onto their policy or onto their you know their account or just saying oh you want this much okay here you go this is how much it's going to be and not having a conversation, right? When things do get tough or if they do ever get tough and they get tight, they're not going to even think about it because of, of getting rid of that life insurance policy because they don't know anything about it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're it's just, just to a bill. Yeah, it's just a bill. Right. I don't know. I think it's like fifty. Like I want people to remember, oh, no, this is exactly what I have in my life insurance, because you're not going to wake up thinking about your life insurance policy every single day. Right. <laughs> They're not like us, probably. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know, they don't think about insurance every yeah. morning. So, anyways, I think that's a the kind of, you, I, you didn't necessarily say that exactly, but you fed into, like, you mm-hmm. know, basically is what your thoughts were on that. So, okay. That's interesting. Okay. Um, okay, so what did we talk about? We've got background, Cincinnati, what are things to look for in ins- life insurance products? Um, I guess let's talk about one thing. I don't have this on the on, on these uh, cards here, but what about on with business owners? Mm-hmm. Let's talk on that a little bit and, and key person um, and and when those come into play and um, what what you can do to help mm-hmm. consumers with that. Definitely, and we do a lot of that because you know Cincinnati Insurance is a large mm-hmm. commercial insurance writer. Okay. Uh, predominantly, that you know that's what drives Cincinnati Insurance. So we have a lot of business owner clients. And so we, I get the question all the time, hey, I need a key person policy, do you write that? Or I need a buy-sell policy. Well, and that's, there's not a specific policy to do that. That is the reason for the coverage. Okay. And so the policy itself can be term, it can be whole life, um, but if, if an attorney or advisor tells this business owner, hey, you need to go get some key person coverage, um, then you need to have somebody that can explain, hey, here's your options. Mm-hmm. It can be a term coverage, but at the same time, just like any term, it runs out. You know, there's no cash value. And you need somebody to sit down and explain the difference. So key person coverage is just like it sounds. There's a person that's very key to this business. So what I usually like to use is an, a restaurant, for an example. So if this restaurant has a head chef and everything is based around that chef, Mm -hmm. if he doesn't show up to work one day because he had a heart attack, that restaurant is a world of hurt. And so they're not only going to lose money, they're going to lose clients. Um, And so instantly that business needs money to either replace that lost business or to take that money and go find a chef tomorrow. And, And to do that, they need some cash and a bonus and everything else. And so that money pays out, it would be owned by the business, um, and it can be an expense to the business, but then that money comes back to the business to see use however they see so fit. So the, the, the business is the beneficiary. Correct. Right? So you Correct. have an employee that's the insured, mm-hmm. the business is the owner, Yep. and then the business is the beneficiary. Exactly. Because they have an insurable interest in this person because exactly their livelihood on their company, I guess. Right. Well, and the, and the person has to grant permission to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, a business cannot write insurance. Like an employee has to like let their 
Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, so if the agency wanted to write a policy on you, mm -hmm. you have to give them permission. Hey, that's okay. Okay. Um, because we're insuring your life, mm -hmm. and so you have to sign the app. You have to consent if there's medical testing, all those kinds Makes of sense. things. Yeah, you can't just go write a life insurance policy on right. some random. Oh well, yeah, right. yeah. Employee, you've been here for two months. <laughs> well, well. Is it, there a qualification it, time? I guess there, on. there is. You know, it's called Stoli, Stranger Own Life Insurance. Okay. Um, and, and so it's a niche market in the life insurance industry. Mm -hmm where you know outside entities invest in people they don't know just for the sheer fact of trying to make money um, and it's something we don't participate in many companies don't um, but it's out there and huh. if you ever hear about Stoli insurance that, that's kind of what it's referring to um, and yet another question I remember I started talking mm. about that oh I do I just forgot it um. I don't know. But the other one you mentioned was buy-sell. Oh, yeah. Um, and so a buy-sell uh, policy would, again, be the reason for the coverage. Uh, so let's say two brothers own a business. And if one brother were to pass away, if there's nothing written down, then that spouse becomes the partner. And many times that would not be a fun scenario or situation. And so they have a buy-sell agreement so that um, if one of the partners were to pass away, hey, the other partner will buy that half from the surviving spouse. And so the buy-sell agreement states that, that, hey, if somebody passes away, I will buy their portion out. So it's an agreement. Then the agreement can be funded by the life insurance. So yeah. a buy-sell agreement is just an agreement. It has nothing to do with life insurance. It just states that if somebody were to die, then I'm the first one that can buy them out. Gotcha. Okay. Then life insurance is what funds that. And so you get life insurance so that um, then there's cash there to do that. If there's no life insurance there, if it is not funded, mm -hmm. it is kind of the coin phrase, then, hey, they have to go get a loan. They have to come up with cash. And that surviving spouse wants that money yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm and, and so all of a sudden they have to go to the bank, you know, they have to pay interest. They may not qualify at that point because that bank is a little apt. Hey, you know, you just lost half your management. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can loan you money. Correct. Whereas, hey, if there's a buy fund or a buy sell life insurance policy in place, hey, you're gonna get the check within a matter of days. Yeah. So that, so basically the person that yeah, the the person that they that is the insured if they pass, that money the the death benefit mm -hmm. coverage is going to the business to pay or to buy that person's right. half. Or that it, it depends share. how the business is Correct. set up. Sometimes they can go to the individual, the other partner, mm -hmm. or to the business if the business is yeah. going to buy that out. So how do you, um, and I feel like this is a probably something that you come in and, and can do a really good job with helping you know business owners with this, but how do you go with the, to try to get that evaluation on how much death benefit we should have? Great question. Um, there's lots of different ways. One is a true formal evaluation. Okay. And so that can be done uh, by, by a CPA, by an attorney. You know, the more detailed, the better for us to justify that amount. Uh, especially with startups, with tech companies, um, you know, it's hard to put a value mm -hmm. on that business. So we can look at outlying businesses, just like in a house, you know, you can look at comps. Um, same thing with businesses. You can kind of look at comparable businesses, where they came from, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so we, while we ourselves don't do the valuation, mm -hmm. uh, we can base some of that off of the balance sheet, um, you know, and revenue of the business. Okay. Um, we recommend though, hey, you need a formal valuation, if nothing else, so each partner is comfortable with, you know, where that amount came mm -hmm. from. Now, when it comes to a key person, um, that is based on the person's income. Okay. So let's say we're paying that chef a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, we can go up to fifteen times that amount okay. for the business. Fifteen times their income, so we can right. do what one point five. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, if he's specialized, if he's trained in for Italy, sure. you know those kind of yeah, things. Yeah. We we can even go beyond that. Um, in, in life insurance, we're still a small enough company where we can take someone's extenuating circumstances or special scenarios in, into account. Mm -hmm. While we have guidelines that kind of drive you know, our decisions, mm -hmm. you know, we can make some of those exceptions uh, when it comes to special scenarios like okay. that. Okay. That's good to know. And I feel like with the buy-sell, to go back to that, um, that's an important thing to make mm -hmm. sure when you're talking to an advisor to not just go like make sure make sure you're getting a full on evaluation because yes. everything sounds great you know oh yeah we're all shaking hands and everybody's happy but if somebody goes somebody passes away 
and the spouse is not happy, that can get pretty ugly. It, it, it can. I mean, families are broken apart. <clears throat> friends never talk to each other yep. anymore. Uh, because if you're talking hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's no agreement, it ends up yeah. in court, and then all the money's Everybody's lost to, to everybody. Yep. And, and so, yeah, it's not a good scenario all yeah. the way around. Um, what about, like, so, like, let's say you have a bit, like, let's say you do one for a startup business, and then, you know, X amount of years later, you know, they're mm -hmm. growing and scaling. Like, Definitely. Like, do they, I'm assuming, do you relook at those type of things? Mm -hmm. Like, reevaluate re the it, business? That's a great point because when you start up a business, you have mm -hmm. no idea. You hope it's going to grow. Correct. Um, but again, depending on environment, depending on culture, the world scenario, you don't know how fast that's going to grow. So that's where that buy sell needs to be evaluated at least every few years. Okay. And so if it does grow, let's say it grows beyond what it's funded. Mm -hmm. One, you don't have to fund that buy sell completely, but you have to understand, hey, if we have a policy for a million dollars, but now my portion is worth two million, hey, I understand, yeah. hey, I'm going to have to come up with that extra money. Okay. Uh, the other way is if they do want to buy more life insurance, it would be a new policy. And so with any life insurance, once it's written, it's a contract. And so you can take things away, you can lower death benefit, but to add it, um, we require total underwrite, new underwriting, underwriting new age. We don't know if you know they have bad, bad health since then. And so it's a whole nother process starting from scratch. Oh. I always tell people, hey, it's kind of like a haircut. It's you can take more off, but you can't add add back. It's true. Yeah, that's a great point. And that's a good. I get that question all the time. Like, mm -hmm. oh, can I just increase this down the road? Well, you, you can't increase it, but we can get you right. on the policy. And then yep. the, the risk of that is, again, you don't know what's going to happen in the next five years. Right? Exactly. So exactly true. That's why we talked about at the beginning. When's the best time to get life insurance? Young and yesterday. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, one thing I, I want to yeah. tell people, too, is because um, just with the economic situations, not just insurance market, but with inflation and everything else, mm -hmm. uh, people's budgets are tight. And, and life insurance, for, for us to ask somebody to come up with more money or another bill, you know, is that fair? And so what I tell people to think about is, hey, if your budget is tighter now than it was five years ago, because groceries have gone up, because gas has gone up, because uh, school is more expensive or, or what have you. Hey, this is the time you need life insurance more than ever. Because now if you're living paycheck to paycheck or things are really tight, if that income's gone, hey, now you're in way more hurt than you were before because there's no cushion. Correct. And so, hey, you can get that term insurance for, for not much money. Um, you know, again, something is better than nothing. Yep, something is better than nothing, and um, I think that's uh, yeah, like like you just said, the the budgeting piece of things. Um, you know, sixty percent of your income goes away tomorrow. Like, oh, you don't you don't buy life insurance to make somebody rich. You, you right. buy life insurance to basically eliminate problems for that. You know, for your family. One hundred percent. And the other thing I've had this question lately. Um, you know, in you know, we're not in Johnson County, but KC Metro, we have a lot of stay-at-home moms, stay-at-home dads. You know, how do we insure that person? Uh, or can yeah, we? Yeah, like how do you put it value? Right, the death? Yeah. Be because there's no income there. I mean, they obviously work, <laughs> work uh -huh. way harder than most people, uh -huh. um, but there's no income to protect. Yeah, so what do you do with that? And, and, with you? Right, and so I, I look back at my scenario. So my wife stayed at home with our kids while they were young. Uh -huh. um, and, and I was in, you know, insurance. I traveled a little bit here and there. Um, but... What would happen if something would happen to her? And so in my scenario, uh, many carriers will say, well, I'd have to hire a chauffeur or an Uber to drive kids back and forth to school. I'd have to hire a maid to come do the laundry. And, and they put dollar figures on all these things. Mm -hmm. And you see this list of all the things that a stay-at-home mom or dad does, which is great because it does put kind of a value on mm -hmm. them. Um, but as I thought, thought back about it, it's like, you know, if for God forbid something happened to my wife, would I really hire a stranger to come in and clean the house Correct. and take them? No, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing those things, which means I'm not making money like I did before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm replacing my income either way. Mm -hmm. and, and when you put it into that context of, well, yeah, that's kind of how it would work. And so my income would go down drastically. And so we can underwrite based on the spouse's income. Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, uh, not quite as much, but we can go up to 10 to 15 times the spouse's income. Okay. Because, again, life is going to be disrupted. 
and so income won't be disrupted. And so that, that person can still get, you know, if the spouse is making 100000 a year, that a stay-at-home spouse can still get at least up to a million and a half. Yeah, okay. That's good to know. And I, I, I 100% agree with that. Like, everybody value, your, 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 the, le- the life insurance is replacing value. Mm-hmm. And value isn't just a dollar, right? right? Like, right. value is, there's all different types of things. Like, we just talked about with the business, right? Yeah. The value that that employee brings to that business, right? So, we're protecting the value. And, um, yeah, I think that's a great, great point. Because that's, a, that's something that we do see, see a mm-hmm. lot. Is people like, well, I don't need, like, my wife doesn't need anything. Or my husband doesn't need anything. So, we're like. Well, right. that's the benefit that you have a partner with exactly. this person is they are taking care of the other things that you're not. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it's almost like a partnership. You know, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the exact same thing. Exactly. So. Okay. Well, this has been great. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up here, though. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. I appreciate you coming on, Darren. Um, if you guys haven't checked out, um, this will, well, this will post what? Today's, today's Thursday. Wednesday. Today's what is today? Wednesday? Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. So this will post next Wednesday. Um, and if you guys haven't checked out uh, anything to do with Cincinnati, Cincinnati is a great company. And we're excited to be able to offer you guys these products and the partnership. Yeah, we have we're, we're looking forward to lots of, a lot of many years and uh, ways to help your clients yeah. out. So awesome. Well, Darren, thank you so much for coming on. No, thanks Appreciate for having you. me. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. Thank you.